Hi everyone. I'd like to talk about cancer because as often is the case, what I see in the medical established world are things that I find to be deadly and harmful to people and procedures that are based on ignorance that are perpetuated as though they were founded in some sacred truths, period. You know, the problem is that if you don't understand how life works, you can't begin to really have an intelligent approach to cancer. And that's exactly what's going on, as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, I'm always talking about how flowing energy organizes matter, and when matter is organized, it does so by always oscillating between the extremes of whatever you're looking at. Happiness, sadness, heart contraction, release, oxygen in, out. There's always opposing things happening. And in an effort to protect against free radicals, the body and the cells of the body have the ability to shift fuel sources and although we feed our cells an abundance of carbohydrates, that apparently is not uh, the safest and healthiest thing for us, for us to do. And we need to be able to shift from efficient energy production to inefficient modes if they in fact protect us from excess free radicals, which would otherwise cause cells to die from one, for one reason or another. So with that as a basis, I want to talk a little about breast cancer. Uh, we all know that we uh, have a variety of uh, breast cancer mutations that have been characterized. We have our HER2 gene, we have estrogen positive and progesterone positive hormone receptor positive genes. And one of the typical treatments that is done is to give an anti-estrogen or anti-androgen um, things that block the pathways for the synthesis of these compounds or anti-growth um, factor receptor because that's what's involved with the HER2 mutation. Or alternatively, we move into the cell because remember it's the receptors on the outside that are communicating with the outside. But as you move in, then the, the various entities are communicating with other things within the cell until you get down into that nucleus. And that's where ultimately you control gene expression. And a significant player in gene expression is uh, ways where the DNA gets tightened up or opened up. Okay. And depending on the situation that a cell is in, it has different things opened or closed. Architectural changes, basically, we're talking about. So, where I want to go with this is that what conventional medicine views as significant is whether or not you're HER2 positive or progesterone positive or estrogen positive, and they use these tamoxifen or other newer forms of that same ideology of inhibiting uh, aspects of the pathway. So what I want us to do is look at what's really going on. So once again, in order for any living thing to live, it has to be taking in significant quantities of negative entropy, of organizing potential that it uses. And in turn, it has to dissipate its waste. And for the whole system to work on fundamental principles, you have to make more waste then you create organization, okay? And these receptors are involved in how the cells are talking to the outside. So if you have something that prevents the production of estrogen, for example, then if it's an estrogen-driven cancer, that's going to be potentially one way to inhibit it, okay? So... There are other receptors that are not on the outside of the cell, but they sit in the cytoplasm of the cell, and when the compound comes in, like estrogen, okay, when estrogen comes in, 
it doesn't bind to a receptor on the surface, like with growth factors which are on the surface, but rather the estrogen comes in and binds to a receptor which then penetrates into the nucleus of the cell where it then binds to sequences on DNA that control expression of genes which then control what reactions happen, okay? So there's this flow of information, this organized flow of information that's occurring. And if, you, if the information is telling a cell to divide and you block that information anywhere along the way, then you have potentially a means of controlling that cancer, if that's what we're looking at. So the problem with this approach is n numerous. First, again, let's back off and remember that because of the imbalance in carbohydrate metabolism that we promote by the diet that we eat, and which on the one hand does have the advantage of promoting the differentiated state. In other words, it promotes doing things, muscle contraction, insulin production, antibody production, thinking, seeing, smelling, everything that we are doing will involve activity. And the more efficient you make the activity, that's been what's so critical for our brain because our brain uses so much energy and is already too hot. So with that in mind, most cancers start out as sugar burning cancers. And what chemo does or what anti-estrogen compounds do in the case of uh, breast cancer or prostate cancer, an anti-androgen treatments, what they do is they shut off certain pathways, but the underlying causes of the problems that lead to the imbalance of a cancer have not been addressed. And often what they are arising from is excess free radical production and how the cells have to expand different avenues of survival, basically, in order to um, deal with this excess free radical production. I use the example of a balloon. If it was totally filled up and you squeeze it at all, it bursts. Well, if that balloon was filled with free radicals and totally filled up and you squeeze it at all, it bursts. That's what you want to happen with your cancer cells, okay? But they're usually not filled up and they're partially filled. And if you have a balloon that's soft and squeezable and you squeeze it, it's gonna pop out here and you squeeze it there, it'll pop out someplace else, right? That's what I call metabolic plasticity. Different pathways expand or contract as a function of what they can do. In other words, if expanding a particular pathway is gonna cause the cell to die, the feedback within the cell as it senses free radical damage would tend to open up other pathways and close down the ones that were causing that problem. So, sadly, the approaches taken by the big farmer are to block these different roadways, so to speak, these different pathways, because they are involved, yeah, they've done the analysis, they are involved in a particular cancer activity. But by not understanding how life works, they don't get it that all, all that's going to happen is that the flowing biochemistry and the flowing energy of life will simply bypass their pro the problem that they've created for the flow. And what has to be appreciated as well is that one of the ways a cell can survive and not make too many free radicals is to actually make things. And See, there's a balance between providing the energy to make things, which is potentially pro-inflammatory and free radical generating, and what you're doing with what you're making. So our cells can make fat to protect us from burning too much fuel, or they can divide as another solution to not dying. All right, So they can start making things, and then, well, we'll make two of us at a certain point. That's what the energetics favors, all right? So, what we have to do ultimately, from my understanding of things, is that you have to control the flow of energy. And all of the different medicines that are typically utilized for chemotherapy in general 
involve you know that outer end the communication that's occurring in a differentiated state and what we need to do is shift the energy flow away from that and one of the way, while at the same time we're not overproducing the free radicals that becomes critical so what the cells do when as the ultimate saving grace for themselves to live is they turn off sugar burning, they turn off the electron transport system, which is the efficient way of making energy in the form of ATP, and they turn on what's called autophagy, self-eating. And that goes hand in hand with fat burning. And when they're eating themselves, they're eating free radical damaged pieces of themselves, so they're repurifying themselves. And if a person undergoes cannabis treatment and the person has a cancer that's a sugar burner and you take the high doses of cannabis, it forces them into burning the fat. And if the cells haven't um, been prepared for that, so to speak, then many times they can't make the transition. It's like putting diesel fuel in a gasoline car. It doesn't work. You don't have the right machinery. So the cell dies. And that's great. And that's when cannabis is effective. In contrast, if the cells learn how to make that transition, and at that point, then they know how to both burn fat and carbohydrates, because you can't keep burning yourself. You know, you're going to run out of yourself. That's common sense, all right? So they have to be able to take in energy from the outside, and they have to uh, be able to use that. But if you think about it, it's so simple. If you're recycling your components as you're eating yourself, then you're not bringing them down to the very basic parts that we use to make things in the first place. You have components that have already been synthesized. So it doesn't take as much energy to make components that you can shuffle around and reuse to do things with, in addition to just burning them when appropriate. You see, so you burn your garbage, you purify the air, so to speak, and then you go ahead and you start building things again. And what you want to do is build a state of health. But what the chemo does is it shifts you, it just shifts those pathways, but not all the way to the fat burning, except for when the cells become resistant to the therapies that are being used. Okay? So, where I'm going with this, this is actually a lot of sophisticated biochemistry here. But when you're dealing with estrogen receptors, which are what's known as nuclear receptors, because they go into the nucleus and control gene expression, right? When you're dealing with those nuclear receptors, they can, instead of following that normal route, they can go and sit on the outside of the cell and function with the energy-producing mechanisms that are normally involved with sugar burning. AKT pathways, for those of you who need to know. Uh, they're actually on the cell surface, whereas when the estrogen receptor was binding within the cell, within the nucleus, at that point it's involved with fat burning. So the recycling process is going on, and that's also what happens when people go on, for example, a ketogenic diet. And one of the things they tell you is that they have energy and that they feel good. This is, these are common consequences. It's because they're repurifying their cells. It's like fasting, in a sense. Because when you don't eat food, then you wind up burning yourself up as well. And uh, that's why periodic fasting is a healthy thing, or caloric restriction is a healthy thing. All of these things fit together into this common theme. The problem is, if you have an estrogen-positive cancer, it's totally different if the estrogen-positive is in the nucleus versus if it's on the cell surface. Totally different story. And what they do has a potential of working if they're dealing with a sugar burning cell, but not when they're in the other mode. And what's happened with these drug resistant cancers is they know how to go back and forth. So it's really hard. You can't just focus on the outside. And what you need to basically do is target fat burning and sugar burning. And that's why what I've suggested people do is that they take, uh, if they are resistant with their cancer treatment using cannabis, 
what they should do is take the high dose free radical production that's caused by high doses of intravenous vitamin C because that'll generate free radicals. The balloon will then be swollen and ready to burst and burst. I think I'm right. Anyway, know that there's more to this estrogen positive, pro progesterone positive, HER2 positive, or triple negative uh, cancers because what's important is what fuel are they burning? And are they multi-fueled? This is also, again, why characteristic of all cancer cells, for the most part, is an increase in sugar metabolism. Not, it's actually, actually, I think it's half and half. I think it's half and half. Um, where was I? It's my son calling me to say goodnight. I'll leave it at that. Peace and love. Open your minds. There's more to it than what the doctors are telling you. They don't know the stuff I'm telling you. Have them show me that I'm wrong. Bye.